So I'm going to talk about Q fever. Uh, it is a flu-like disease that is highly infectious and also zoonotic. Uh, it's caused by a bacteria and it can be spread to people through contaminated dust, unpasteurized dairy products, uh, if you help out with uh, the birthing process of uh, goats, cattle, sheep, uh, you could get it that way too. And, uh, but it's rarely spread through like fetuses of pregnant uh, animals or humans. Uh, through the blood, but it could be passed through by the like placenta afterwards or something. Um, and it's not really spread through uh, reproduction either, so like from female to male or something. And it's it usually spikes in spring and early summer because that's when a lot of animals are birthing. So the Q actually stands for query because they didn't actually know what caused it at first, and it just never changed. And Australia was actually the first place to realize that it was not, and then it was like about five years or so later that America realized too. And it's mainly where there's like ranches and stuff like that. So the Western and the Plains states like Texas, Cal California, Texas, Colorado, Illinois actually make up about 35% of the cases that have been seen. And it can actually be uh, a potential bioterrorism agent because the fact that it can affect humans. And it's fairly dangerous and very infectious. So you can either have no symptoms at all, or you can get fever, chills, fatigue, headache, muscles, aching, nausea and vomiting, chest pain, stomach pain, weight loss. Uh, you'll have like coughing that doesn't really get anything up, you just cough. Uh, and if it's actually like severe, you could get pneumonia or hepatitis. The main people that tend to be at risk for it are vets because they are in contact with a lot of the animals that are infected, but there's also people that have <coughs> higher risk, uh, and those people usually have heart valve diseases, uh, blood vessel issues, weakened immune systems, uh, kidney problems, and <coughs> fever can actually cause endocarditis, lung issues, pregnancy problems, hepatitis, and meningitis, which you do not want to get tested for meningitis because you need a needle in your spine, and it's very painful. <laughs> um, so to treat it, it's usually okay like not treating it with antibiotics, but it's recommended to treat it for about two weeks. So that's clinical, but there's also chronic, which basically just keeps coming back no matter how much you try. And then usually that's about 18 months of antibiotics. And uh, so because it has so many symptoms that are really common, it's hard to actually diagnose it. And there's not actually a vaccine that's in America. It's mainly available in Australia because of uh, high-risk occupations, and that's pretty much where it like was originally founded. Um, but another issue is that it's extremely resistant to heat, drying, and most common dis disinfectants. So it's really hard to like try to avoid it or like try to get rid of it. So you just try to reduce risk of getting it which is pretty much avoiding contact with infected animals and <coughs> not consuming raw milk or products. And that's your sources, yeah. You know, there is there is a movement that people are drinking raw milk, you know, unpasteurized, but I'm, I'm not gonna do it. I think
think there one time I had unpasteurized goat milk on some farm someplace, but now I like my stuff pasteurized. And you made a, you had a nice word about it, a non-productive cough versus a productive cough, because non-productive means you're coughing, but nothing is coming up. A productive cough is you're coughing and things are coming up like phlegm, okay? Q fever, so yeah, very interesting. That's interesting they have a vaccine in Australia and not in the United States, so very interesting. Um, comments, questions? Let's give her a little round of applause. Thank you. We don't have a dog here today, so I don't have to worry.